My name is Jeff Cross. I'm the media director for ISSA. I'm here with Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, a good friend of mine and the senior director of GBAC. Gavin, we're here to talk about a very exciting topic of the word is biofilms. Yes, Jeff. I've only heard this term really from you, Gavin. Did you make it up? No, I didn't. This is, this is great, Jeff. Biofilms is about cities of microorganisms. This is so radical for everyone in the industry to understand that by understanding the microbiology, how bacteria live in the real world, that they don't live single, on alone, in isolation, they live in communities. Cities of microorganisms will completely change the way that we do the work we do in the industry, the way we clean, the way we restore, the way we remediate, if we just learn to understand biofilms. Okay, help me understand, where are these biofilms? Everywhere. Then does it matter what we do? There's both good biofilms, that's good bacteria, and there's detrimental harmful bacteria. And the challenge we have within our industry is being able to identify the good from the bad. So a lot of the, the approaches that we do right now is we focus on one bacteria. Okay. And we don't talk about the communities, and then we try to change or that surface by cleaning that surface and taking everything off, but what, what grows back? You need to understand that. So shouldn't manufacturers of cleaning products focus on this and talk about this? They do in other industries. Okay. And this is really important. So you've often heard me say, read the label. I've heard you say that. But on the product. Follow the instructions. Yeah, exactly. And you should. Health and safety. But when you do that, you'll find on the back of the label, it talks about one bacteria, one pathogen, one germ, one microorganism, salmonella. It'll talk about E. coli, but it doesn't talk about it, the reality of growing in a community. And when we do the research and development of new cleaning products and disinfectants especially, a lot of that research is done on one species of germ. Bacteria, yeast, molds, you name it, that's what it's done. Instead of saying, no, in the real world, on this surface here, we have a whole community, we have a whole city how do we do that? Recently, Gavin, you sent an interesting message about rotting metal shelves. Yep. Metal doesn't rot. Explain it. Right. So the way that these cities of microorganisms, these cities of bacteria and other germs work together, they work together as all their best friends and they produce other substances. So the first thing they do when they start multiplying on a surface they produce what's called EPS, extracellular polymeric substance. That's like the glue. Okay. So what I want you to imagine is a building with scaffolding around the building, and all that scaffolding is filled in with some sort of substance that creates a whole entire surface. Makes sense. And inside the building are the germs. When we apply our disinfectant or our cleaning product on a biofilm, it doesn't penetrate to kill the bacteria. So we have to use a substance that does that. So to make this simple, we're talking about a, a biofilm that keeps us from getting to the bacteria, to the surface in the cleaning process. We're talking about every surface in the world. Okay. We're talking about how bacteria actually live in the real world, in communities, not on their own, on their own. And they work in a way that's synergistic. And what I mean by that is that community, one bacteria makes a product, the other bacteria makes a product, you put those together, and that, that creates a protective, protective barrier. barrier. Now, with those protective barriers, bacteria is multiplying all the time. When that, those numbers increase, the size increases, and then you might start to see color on a surface of a bio, so biofilm does have color, and you'll see the color on a surface as the, as the bacteria grow in a biofilm. Mm -hmm. And when they get to a certain size, it breaks open, and guess what happens? The bacteria spreads to the next surface. So if you don't clean focusing on biofilms, you're going to get spread of bacteria. And if it's harmful, detrimental bacteria, you're going to get areas damaged. So when we talked about the, the metal being damaged, the bacteria is damaging the metal. The, Interesting. The surface. And we see this a lot in um, drain pipes, for example. But we're beyond all that. We can do drain. So biofilms exist as both wet biofilms but more importantly, dry biofilms. Who is most impacted by this? Is it hospitals, the medical? I think you focus a bit in your work on uh, locker rooms. Yep. So where is it more important to focus our efforts on this? 
You're going to say everywhere, probably. I'm going to say exactly what you just said, Jeff. <laughs> everywhere. No, no. But the more important is we have studies that show that um, the indoor air quality, but also what's on the surface, can affect the performance of professional athletes. There's been studies done, Major League Baseball, uh, football players on quarterbacks, that when they're exposed to air that's of a poorer quality, or they're exposed to biofilms, their precision is decreased. Why'd you lose that game the other day? Because the locker room didn't have good surface, didn't have clean surfaces, and didn't have good air quality. That's real, locker that's room. science. All right. When you go into a hotel, imagine what the biofilms are in there, what you're being exposed <laughs> to. Don't say that. You've got an immune system that protects you, Jeff, but no, often when I travel, I don't feel too good after when I travel. Yeah. And that's because I've been exposed to bacteria that's growing in biofilms. So we know what biofilms are, we know how important it is to address them properly. Talk about the necessary tools, equipment, and products. This is where it gets really exciting. So, so many people in our industry are carrying different tools. So you might use black lights, ultraviolet lights, to see what fluoresces. They might use ATP meters, because ATP is the energy of life. Bacteria produces ATP. They might use moisture meters to look for areas of dampness and moisture where there's most likely to be damage on the surface, but also um, growth of, of, of microorganisms that can be harmful. What we know about biofilms coming from other industries, like the food industry, um, hospitals, uh, we look at the plumbers when, and they look at drains, for example. When we look at um, big factories that get affected by biofilms, we know that biofilms fluoresce. And this is where it gets really exciting. Fluorescence is going to be our greatest friend in life because these handheld flashlights that are, have special lenses in them with special lights at special wavelengths for light right. nan at the nanometers make these bacteria fluoresce and glow in the dark. Or glow, or glow. So you can see them. And then you make the invisible be visible, and now you can do a better, a more professional job in the industry by saying, it looks clean, might even smell clean, but I can now detect bacteria on a surface that may lead to further spread, cross-contamination, or may even lead to infection, or may lead to discoloration, or even damage to that particular surface. With all this in mind, and proving that it's there and proving that cleaning and science can fix the situation there must be a business play here for those watching because there's opportunity yep. is that something you're seeing happen are you seeing any movement there yeah really and this is why i'm, I'm going to use the word radical because by understanding how microorganisms live in the environment understanding biofilms how they impact surfaces as well as our health if you can to explain that to the the customer, right. that when you're coming in to do your work, you're doing this based on health and safety. Cleaning for health, for example, or when I work with professional athletes, I'm cleaning for performance, but I'm removing what you can't see, but I can detect with my instruments, because we're focusing on communities of microorganisms, not just one. In a way, it's cleaning for appearance, because you're showing what's there, and you have to remove what you see, but it's cleaning for health. Correct. It's okay. bringing everything together holistically as a comprehensive approach that focuses on everything in the indoor built environment. And you mentioned selling this type of service to people paying for the cleaning, but for facilities and with people with budgets, proving it needs to be done should help with that as well. Great question, Jeff, because we often think that a new thing like this that's so radical is going to increase the cost of our services. No, it's not it's going to make us be more professional. It's going to align us with many other industries that have been looking at biofilms for years. A dairy farm looks at biofilms on stainless steel all the time. Hmm. Food, the food industry looks at biofilms in food production as well as processing. Kitchens are looking at biofilms all the time. Hospitals have been looking at biofilms for years. Now, we're taking all that knowledge that's learned and understood and bringing it over into the indoor spaces that we work in and applying that to help the customer. Biofilms is for the cleaning industry too. Just a little bit, Jeff. I think it's really important that we start to have conversations, help these people, help everyone in the industry say, oh, I work to eradicate, eliminate, decrease biofilms because I'm focusing on cleaning for health and safety. Well, Gavin, good topic and look forward to seeing this movement continue. That's radical. It's fun, Jeff. <laughs>